Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today as usual, let's just go over the market, see what happened and what we can expect for the next, uh, for the rest of the week, the last two days of the week. And of course, potentially going into next week. So yet another brutal day in the market, guys. I mean, just a sea of red. Once again, move my camera, you can see pretty much everything is red. The majority of things on my watch list are red. This is my like, quote unquote, main watch. This is where I have like a lot more things, but you can see this. The majority of things are, of course, in the red, though, including, naturally, the indices, the main ones I care about, QQQ, SPY, and, I mean, IWM, I guess. Everything's in the red, right? So that's obviously not good. But again, it shouldn't be too unexpected. Like, so I did say yesterday how I expected some consolidation here, but the, the thing with, this is why I kept screaming to be careful, right? Like, people kept, like, being upset at me, saying, like, oh, man, you know, you just keep saying, you know... This is why, like, when we kept running up like this, I kept saying, like, be careful, be careful. The issue is, like, when selling starts after such a run-up, like, it starts. And it gets, it, it's it's pretty aggressive, usually. Like, it just sells, right? Because, like, the second it starts showing weakness, like I said, people will start exiting, people will panic sell. And it, and it just snowballs the effect. Like, when selling starts, it starts, right? Like, it goes uh, pretty aggressively, usually, too, especially after such a run-up. So you can see literally just in the last two days, we went down at the most, it was like an 11% drop. Like we pretty much wiped out like a week and a half's worth of uh, Tesla gains in like two days. So that's kind of, that's why I kept screaming caution, like whenever we were here, cause this could have easily happened right here. Like this right here could have easily happened right here all the way down to like mid to low 900s easily. But it happened up here instead. I mean, it could have happened right here and then dropped down. Instead, it happened up here. The point is that the kept, the more this kept going up, you know, the riskier it became, right? And that's why I kept screaming. I'm like, guys, be careful, be careful, be careful. Like, you know, the music will stop at some point. I don't know when, but it will stop. And when it stops, well, the party's over. And that's essentially what we're witnessing right now. Um, so what do I see happening for Tesla? Well, as you can see in the chart right here, this is the intraday five-minute candles. It was inside this kind of like, it's hard to even say this is a bull or bear pennant in all honesty, because it had a nice run up here. Then it had an insane sell-off here. So this was like some kind of like weird, neutral, like undecided pennant, but nonetheless a pennant. So, you know, you can still decide where it'll go based on where it breaks out of. As we can see here, guys, it did break to the downside. So this is not necessarily a good thing. I did pick up a couple shares at 1050, an extremely small portion of my portfolio, but nonetheless, I picked up like 10 shares uh, at, at, at 1050. Just cause, you know, it's like, I wouldn't be surprised I honestly would not be surprised. Let me show you guys something quickly. Uh, I would not be surprised if there's like a small bounce tomorrow, mainly because like I always say, and I say this every single time, like whenever there's a lot of green, I expect a drop. Whenever there's a lot of red, I expect a bounce. This is kind of one of those scenarios where there's a lot of red and I expect a bounce at some point. Now, whether it's tomorrow or not is hard to tell. The main reason I think it's tomorrow is because I really just can't imagine Friday and Monday being bullish days. Mainly because going through the weekend, as usual, you guys know I don't like Fridays. I'm usually fairly bearish on Fridays. Mondays tend to follow Fridays. But the reason I also think Monday will be bearish is because next week on Tuesday, we have the CPI data, which is essentially the inflation uh, reader, if you will. That's going to be pretty bad, in my opinion. And on t uh, Wednesday, we have the PPI. So, like, we have two data points that the market usually gets pretty panicky over uh, before it gets released. And then, obviously, it digests and based on the numbers, you know, it moves, you know, correspondingly to that but the point is that there's usually fear before those data points come out on you know the, you know in this, in this case next tuesday and wednesday which is why like i wouldn't be surprised if like tomorrow more, i guess maybe friday there is going to be a, some form of bounce now the issue is i don't see the bounce being anything crazy um pretty much like i would say absolute best case scenario is the gaffle up here but i really don't even think that'll happen not yet and the reason i don't think that'll happen is because well we have to get through this 1072 ish 1070 to 1075 area. That's going to be very difficult. Uh, and the main reason is because you can see as we were, you know, up in this area, well, this whole like, you know, 1070, low 1070s was, you know, a nice support. We constantly bounced over it uh, and around it nonstop. A lot of support kept, you know, there's a lot of supply. Oh, sorry, a lot of demand uh, in this area, right? As usual, old support becomes new resistance. Now, in this case, there's been a lot of supply in this area. So I bought, I bought the shares just as a, you know, just in case there's something announced that Giga Texas that isn't expected. Because again, guys, a lot of people are like, oh, Giga Texas is opening up. That means we're going to run up for that. No, we're not. That's just, we're just literally not. Like, why would we run up on Giga Texas opening? It's nothing new. The market doesn't respond 
to news that's not news like it's not news that texas is opening everyone knows it's opening it's completely and fully aware like that's things that's already like we know it's opening like that's nothing that's nothing new the market reacts to news that's new news that is unexpected for instance if something horrible happens to texas tesla will plummet on the flip side, if something crazy is announced to Texas, that's like non-expected, you know, no one was aware it was coming except for like insiders, I guess. But like, you know, the public or the general public or whatever, like it wasn't aware, it wasn't public information, something crazy, something huge gets announced. Like, let's say tomorrow at Gig Texas, they show some insane Cybertruck stuff, which they might, which I don't know if that'll change much. But let's say tomorrow, by some miracle, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we saw full cell driving. Well, that's not something that anyone expected to happen tomorrow. Of course, that's a rally. So I'm kind of just like having a little bit of shares just in case we get some form of rally or something. But essentially, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point this week, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday, we essentially get a bounce back to like this, you know, this line roughly like that 1072 ish, give or take. Uh, where I personally would take the profits. But I, again, like that wouldn't super, super surprise me. But like, I just I really don't see why we would go higher than this and especially go higher than this gap flat like 1080, like 1090 almost, honestly. Uh, I, I just I don't understand why we will go higher than that. And another thing that's pretty you know important to keep in mind, guys, is we have this tomorrow. We have FOMC members speaking tomorrow, and a decent amount of them. One of them, of course, at 9 a.m. Eastern is Bullard. I believe Bullard is like the hawk of hawks. I think he's like the hawkish, the the hockiest hawk on the Fed. Essentially, what that means, I, I think. Don't don't you know quote me on that. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's a hawk. But essentially, like usually the, the Fed has been pretty bearish lately. And then we have a lot of people from the Fed talking tomorrow, which can be pretty bad. And on top of that, next week, we have those two data points, CPI and BPI. So like, I just don't see anything completely crazy propelling us anywhere near upwards. Like, again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a bounce mainly just because of like, just that there's like a lot of red. And again, if there's a lot of red, naturally you expect a bounce at some point. But I really, really, really expect this to just be a simple dead cat bounce. Like I really don't think this would be anything to like be, you know, crazy or ecstatic about. I don't think this bounce is gonna be like some insane thing. Again, I expect a bounce potentially to 1070 for Tesla. Like the QQQ, like I really don't think it will get much higher than like this gap fill and at the very best like 365. Like I which is actually a decent amount. Wait, that's actually a decent move. Never mind. Let's see, hold on. That's like a three percent move. Like that's like best case scenario in my opinion like i really just i can't imagine going much higher than this like i i just don't understand why we would like on the spy maybe like a one like a 1.6 percent bounce like i just i don't see anything being like that much better than that but again because i expect the bounce that's why i bought the shares but on the flip side because tesla broke out of this bull pen and right at the market close to the downside i mean the market's close so this take this with a grain of salt in my opinion but not like not a good sign i'll be honest not good so what do I see in general, like in terms of like the worst case and the best case? So again, best case scenario, I expect a gap fill for Tesla sometime this week, maybe Monday by some miracle. Probably will be a massive bull trap. Quote unquote worst case for this week is essentially down to like a thousand, like low thousands to like 1020, 1011, somewhere in that like low-ish thousand range, like pretty much just this gap fill. Like I really don't see us going much lower. Like I'd be completely shocked if we also break under a thousand. The issue with Tesla trading, like right in the middle of this range, right, pretty much right at dead center, like between 1100 and a uh, thousand is like, it's literally dead center. There's, it's kind of a no man's land. There's no real support and resistance where it's at right now, other than above and below it. So it's like right dead smack center. So at this point, it really is like almost anyone's guess as to where it'll go. But the point is that there's clear scenarios or there's clear tops and bottoms that it can go to in the very short term, of course, that we can expect, which again, is going to be this 1070 and going to be, again, the very low thousands, you know, 1020 to a thousand, somewhere in that general range. I still have my puts that I sold, obviously the 1040s and the 1030s. So if Tesla ends under 1040, but above 1030, I'm going to buy uh, shares there. If it ends under 1030, well, then I'm buying a lot of shares. Like, quite a bit of shares, which I'm okay with. I don't really mind too much. Uh, and then potentially play you know, another small bounce or something like that. We'll see what happens, but that's pretty much what I'm seeing guys. So taking a look at the daily one more time on the moving averages, you can see well below both of the moving averages, which is of course showing a sign of weakness that we are looking for the downwards trend here. This uh, uh, RSI is just pointing straight down. Um, looking at the one hour chart, you guys know like the one hour, the RSI is actually starting to make on the one hour, uh, lower highs but in a good way on like the uh macd over here so it's getting smaller which is good we want to see that that is showing that you know there is potential for a bounce coming up um the rsi is also all the way down at the bottom now at 29 on the what's it called um 
on the R side on the one hour chart. So that also it, it, there are signs that are pointing to a potential bounce. But again, I just I, it's not going to be a huge bounce. Like I really I really truly don't think it'll be anything to be crazy about. It'll just be a bull trap potentially for people that are just unaware. But this is why I kept screaming to be careful, guys. Like even when we were up here, the highest open interest, essentially the highest contract that was open for Tesla that people were buying was for this Friday, 1200 calls. Even while we're up here, you do realize that when Tesla runs this much and it still runs this much and people are buying 1200 calls up here, you realize that they're very expensive. Like they're extremely juiced up, very frigging expensive. And people that are not, people that bought those right now are just down in the water, like number one, like you're just like rip that contract in all honesty, like here you can see 1200 contract. Uh, it should be, uh, that's calls. Um, or that was puts rather calls down 70% today. Like people that bought this contract for this Friday for 1200, you just lost 70% of your money on that contract. And it was an expensive contract to begin with. That's why I always say, be careful. You can also see the volume increasing on selling pressure. The candle is not looking that great. Not the worst, not the best candle. It's a very mediocre candle. Not much to write home about. Nice, somewhat hammery candle on the QQQ, but I wouldn't put too much information about that. The SPY looking like a doji that's kind of giving potential signals of a quick little bounce or reversal, but again, short-lived in my opinion. But that's essentially what I'm seeing, guys. Again, this is why I kept saying to be careful, and this is why you know people that kept writing idiotic shit Oh, you'll never see Tesla back in the thousands. Oh, we're definitely seeing it now. And in all honesty, if I'm going to be completely real with you guys, I really wouldn't be surprised if sometime later this month or next month, we see Tesla in the 900s. Would that, that would not surprise me at all. People are going to be like, oh, we'll never see Tesla in the 900s again. Oh, we absolutely will see Tesla in the 900s again. I promise you that. Um, don't, don't be ignorant. Don't listen to people like that. It's just ignorance. It's just complete ignorance. We will see Tesla in the 900s. I don't know. It's not 100%, but I'm pretty confident we will. I don't know when, but at, at some point, I do think we will also. But that's it. That's that's essentially what I'm seeing, guys. I don't know. Either way, you know, market's a little bit undecided right now. I, I think we have a lot of not so good catalysts coming up uh, this week and next week as well. So again, any bounces I think are just going to be short lived and just sell the rallies, sell, sell, sell the rips, and then eventually buy the dips. But either way, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.